haven't got done with this thing. Um, so if you didn't watch my previous video, I in my previous video I designed this box, this one-to-one uh, -one balance box for a uh, dipole setup, um, for like a wire dipole setup. Um, but I wanted to try like an inverted dipole and horizontal, so I wanted to try horizontal um, and also vertical, just because I have a lot of power lines in my neighborhood, so I pick up a lot of noise. I'm like I'm surrounded by power lines. And I know I have pretty good luck with a vertical antenna. Um, and horizontal, actually, it depends on where I actually have the antenna. It really picks up a lot of noise from the power line. So I wanted to try a couple different setups. But uh, so this video is not, this is a choke box. So if you just wanted to do a one-to-one -one choke, all this stuff will be on my Thingiverse page down below. I'll link down below. But all right, so I'm going to first try this one right here. Um, and I try this in a horizontal and vertical position. So I do actually have conduit mounts and adapters to make this either vertical or horizontal. So if you're horizontal, you can mount it to a, I think it's a one inch conduit I have it everywhere. It's something like that, but you'll, you'll see. Um, I have to measure, I think it's a 30 millimeter conduit or 29.75 conduit. Um, yeah, I do, I design, I design everything in metric because it's all 3D printed. So, um, all right, so let me take a look, close, closer look at this here. So, take the lid off. So this will, it's ex almost exactly the same as my other balance box. The only difference is, um, you know, um, it's, it's, instead of actually having like little hooks up here that connect to the wire, this actually runs a uh, stud. So I have an M8 stud. I think it's 150 millimeters or 120 millimeters. I can't remember the length of it, but the length of the stud, it comes through there and then attaches to the baling on each side. Uh, but I wanted to try like a like a rigid, rigid aluminum mount pole. So I went to my local place and I bought some 3 8 inch aluminum round stock. Um, I have them cut to about 8.5 feet, which is 102 inches. And then, like I said, by having this stud here, and you'll see this once I go out and I build it, um, you'll see that I actually have a few inches of adjustment. So... Um, so I'm going to try this in a vertical and horizontal type or positions. And I'm really concerned about noise because, like I said, I have those power lines surrounding me. So, And then I also want to try uh, where's inverted V. So I guess with the inverted V, you're supposed to, it's, it's not supposed to be so directional. Like in a, in a hor horizontal position, it's almost it's sort of a directional and it's, and it's horizontal. But when it's vertical, it's omnidirectional. Um, but at a 45 degree angle, it's sort of like, a, it's kind of omnidirectional. So I wanted to try both and see which one works better. It's basically the same box, but the studs will come through here. Then they're just, you can, you connect it on the end of the studs with some like little, what do they call like little ring hoop mounts or you'll see when I go out and make it. So that's what's, what's cool. Um, and I also have different designs for what position you're in. So this would be if you're if you have this mounted like the, in this position with, with the conduit to protect the the coax. I kind of built this out, outer shield, and it's used a little silicone sealant on the outside of it. So this will protect the cable and the connector from from weather. Even though I do actually usually wrap them with electrical tape or like rubberized coating. So um, yeah, let me show you the difference. So depending on what position you have, like if you had it mounted this way. I have this box so you can protect the cable this way, mainly from rain because we're heading into the rainy season. So, and the same thing. It really all depends on the position you you have it in. All right, so let's go out to the uh, test bench and build this thing, and we'll go ahead and test it. All right, so here it is. So yesterday I got the uh, torrid in there. Got the uh, cover done here. So now you can see how the water goes through like that. Get the water off this thing right here. I've got the two M8 uh, all threads, studs, all threads. Um, got a solder in there like that. A couple of copper that gets locked in the place. So the extra nuts here are to lock in the um, lock in the rods. So I'll show you the rods. All right. So here are the rods. I guess I can get them down now. I have them pre-cut and they're already pre-threaded. So. I made thread. I had to use a long tap. I want to actually. I want it to be adjustable, so I can really dial it in. Yeah, 
Yeah, so what I was saying, this can be either horizontal or vertical. So on the vertical side, I actually have this changer. You can actually buy one at a metal, but pretty cheap too. So I can actually mount it, you know, directionally going out for vertical. But um, I'm going to try, because I already have another vertical uh, antenna. Let me show you. Yeah, I bought the Starduster on eBay for about 84 bucks. It's probably around 100 dollars shipped. Um, but it's a, it's a Starduster quarter wave ground plane antenna. Pretty cool. But, um, alright, so. What I want to do is actually weatherproof. I've already put uh, silicone sealant here. So any place that actually has, I've already had silicone here. But i got to redo the, the bolts here. Put some silicone in there. Because any place where water could possibly get through, I'm going to be using silicone. So I'm also going to be using silicone on the cover. My test tripod. <clears throat> and I'm actually adjusting the things in and out here. It's not the ideal. It's in front of my car. So I'm going to move that out later <clears throat> onto the grass. But um, I'm going to take two inches off each side. That's why actually why I had an extra long all thread. So I could go back and forth and adjust it. And I'm using my Nano VNA to dial it in. So I'm fucking right. I'm fluctuating because it's moving around now because of the error. Um, two five. So yeah, by actually having those long all threads, you know, um, these things right here, it allows me to adjust it out probably like four inches. So that's that my Nano VNA out here. Doing some tests. I've cut off. Two, two, five inches off each side. So I got a pretty flat curve. It definitely changes depending on what direction I have it in. But this is not the final location, so. Um, Guys, right, so look on channel four to here. That's not to be right there. Should probably calibrate it. That's yeah, channel 40. Fluctuates as, as the antenna moves in the wind. All right, so I'm not going to do any more trimming until I get into this final location. All right, so I put a little silicone on there, on the edge. I put a silicone here, here, on the bolts. So any place that actually goes to the outside, I'm putting silicone on. Just because I'm going to actually put, I'm going to put this in a vertical dipole. I think I might get another toroid and then do a horizontal with this. But like I said, I also have that Stardusser too. So this was my original design. And then I messed with this and I got really good results with it, so that's why I decided to do this. So I'm also get this up today, got it all sealed overnight. Silicone, any place where I thought it could, water could leak in. Um, yeah, that's what I put the screw in there into the conduit. Get the conduit's gonna come out. I, I decided to mount it vertically. Um, all right, so that's gonna prevent. Even though it's actually it's clamped on here. This is really just a safeguard in case I get like a heavy wind and it wants to twist or this loosens up over time, you know, with sun, that this is going to keep it from spinning. So I'm going to do the same thing. I put the same thing in here. So you can go all the way through if you wanted to. There's a hole that goes all the way through, but there's locks in place so it will prevent the thing from spinning in heavy winds. All right, so I hooked up the antenna. Uh, I'm not getting, I'm getting horrible SWRs though. So I'm going to hook up my meter in a couple of seconds, but let me show you on the roof. All right, there it is. Let me do the side. I'll go to the side so you can see it in the side. See, that's my box is up there. <laughs> it's actually really, really light. Even though there's a lot of aluminum pole, but it's super, super light because it's aluminum. All right, take a look. All right, so I hope you can see this and hope you can hear me over that. Um... I don't think I've ever seen it this good before on CB antenna. I mean, when I actually have an antenna specifically for CB, how good this thing actually looks. Um, yeah, take a look at this. Um, so that's 385. It's not coming in very good, so I'm going to go back to my CB radio. I'm kind of a bad... The switch that I have out there is pretty cheap. So I might go up my switch, but I've never seen something like this on 11 meters CB band. So... pretty incredible um all right let's uh go back out to my test bench and hook up to one of my radios and see how it sounds over there yeah this is incredible though i've never seen this much traffic on on uh, 11 meters yeah the receive is incredible but the swr is horrible 
So, um, you know, when I tuned it originally, here in my driveway, or on the lawn up in front, I tuned it for a uh, horizontal dipole. So, I was actually on the roof, adjusting the, the rod lengths, and no matter what I did, I mean, it wouldn't really change. So, I'm going to go back up. I'm also going to test this horizontally, too, to see how it works. Makes any difference, but... To test it horizontally, all I have to do is turn it this way. You know, because it's on that mask going that way, so I'm just going to like that. I'm just going to turn it. So, yeah, like I was saying, the receive is incredible, but um, take a look at the, on the Nano VNA here. So it's 3.8, 3.7. It's a little bit worse on the upside. Like I said, I tried pulling the after about three inches of, of, of travel outward or inward, doesn't really matter. I mean, I can always trim more off, but. I trim. I moved out, and I didn't really even really seem to change. So, I wonder if that conduit pulls doing something with it. But forty-three point seven six is the ohm reading. Right, like when I brought day two, so I'm gonna go back on the roof, and I'm gonna flip it to the horizontal. So right now it's in vertical, and in vertical, I'm getting the resonant frequency. It's kind of a, it's really weird drop it's not a flat drop at all so um, because originally when I tuned I tuned it horizontally um, yeah because I'm gonna be I have a Starduster M400 that I want to use as a vertical or actually I was thinking about using this as a vertical and make another horizontal dipole but um, yeah so right now the rods are 99 plus a couple inches so um, originally I had this I wanted this tune for like channel 38 so, um, right now it's at uh, 29,250, and that's where it seems like it's the lowest, but it's a really weird curve. Take a look at that. So, I hope you can see that on the camera. Alright, so I flipped horizontally, getting a much better heat flat curve. But my SWRs are way too high. 2.4. All right, so the best I'd ever look at is one dot four. Um, yeah, let's adjust in height, the position. Actually, I have it in a position where I actually have it facing towards the inner continental U.S. So, um, so it's actually facing. Well, I'm actually at the, I'm at the beach. I'm not right in the water. So, I'm actually sort of like lower. So, actually, in th this direction, it's facing to like back east New York, the east coast. Um, yeah, I'm in Southern California, Costa Mesa, like right on the water. So, um, yeah, I'm basically, you know, going directed towards like Australia in one direction. It's a horizontal, right? So the ends of the tips are the weak spots. So yeah, it's getting like upper one twos, one dot threes on the roof. But I took the the Nano VNA up at the roof of me, and um, I also took the 25 foot piece of coax. So yeah, it was it was getting better on the roof, obviously. So a shorter piece of coax, but so I guess it's probably. Height of this roof. I mean, it's probably a quarter. Probably it's more than a quarter of wavelength. So um, probably ten feet, maybe. I'll, I'll, I'll measure it actually. See how far off the actual ground it is. But um, all right. So that's. I mean, I have one. I mean, I'd like to get it at one dot one, obviously. But I mean, I could spend. I mean, I was up there adjusting the different lengths, uh, different angles. What's weird is. It, it changed, I mean, I know I have a lot of power lines here next to me, so, but it changed based on the direction. So what's funny is like when I pointed it in this direction, I got the best SWR, but if I was pointed this way, or to towards the beach, then um, the SWR would go up to like over two. So what's weird is the direction that I want to point it in is actually had the best SWR, so. All right, so I'm gonna test on this one here. So normally my go-to radio is my President Grant. One that's kicked by a uh, lamp here, but this one, I just want to confirm the SWR. So let me let me calibrate it. Yeah, before when it was in a, in a vertical position, it was getting over five. So now I'm getting pretty good. So I don't know. I guess I could spend hours messing with it. I guess I because I'm, I still got to put my. All right. So actually, I'm kind of actually happy to get that thing in the horizontal. That way, I can test the two because I have one vertical. I'm gonna put one of these, uh, well it's new, it's a new Serio antenna, but it's a M400 Starduster. So I'm probably gonna take down my scanner antenna and put that in its place. 
just because I don't really pay attention. It's not, I mean, I don't know. I guess I could build, I can move the scanner type, scanner antenna to some other spot. So yeah, I wanted to have a vertical, you know, a uh, ground plane, core wave, and also I wanted to have this half wave dipole. I had tried to have it in the vertical position. I, well, the, the clarity was awesome. But, um, all right, so let's probably be in this video. Another side band. It's still pretty early in the day. Before 12 here at the beach. So it seems like it really lights up in the afternoon. Alright, so awesome. If you want the, I'll put it down on my thing of page below. I do actually have a, one of these on there. I think I can't remember if I uploaded it or not, but I, did, I designed a new box too. One without the, upload them both. Um, this is printing ASA, UV resistant, UV resistant ASA. Same thing, one to one ballon. I made another video about the ballon, building the ballon. So if you want to know what ballon I use in that thing, watch the other video. But all right, cool. I'm getting some reception. Uh, yeah, I, I do. Well, I guess I'll find out this afternoon and see how much difference it made between the vertical and horizontal. But all right, guys.